In this video, I'm going to go over some really quick and easy tips for how to write better emails. Email is fast, it's a quick form of communication, but that doesn't mean that we can just send off emails without any thought to how we're writing or structuring them. I'm going to go through a couple of examples of a few emails that would appear that their writers didn't put a whole lot of thought into how they were writing them, and then we'll go over a well-written email and, and explain why it was done well. All right, so if this email were to come into my inbox, I would have no idea, based on this lack of subject, what this person wanted, if it was something that was important, if they had a question, if they were just letting me know they weren't going to be in class the next day. And if I get a couple of hundred emails a day, which I usually do get at least a hundred, I really rely on that subject line to do its job by compelling me to open um, this e email. Otherwise, it might sit in my inbox until I get around to it. Once I've opened this email, though, and I look at the body, I still don't really know what this person wants. They haven't even given me a complete sentence. They've said, see attached. Well, why? Are you submitting an assignment to you, to me? Do you have a question about an assignment? Did you and I speak after class yesterday um, and discuss a problem you were having with an assignment and I suggested you send it to me? I don't know any of that based on the information that's in this email. Here's another example. All right, this one has a subject line, but it just says essay. I don't know who you are, what class you're in, which section you're in, what assignment this is this actually is. If I have a couple of hundred students, I have multiple classes, I have multiple sections of different classes. I don't know who you are. You haven't given me enough information to go on. And the body of the email doesn't help. Would you like for us to train in our essays during class? Again, which essays, which assignment? If I have multiple classes, they're on different schedules. I don't know which schedule you're on. I need more information. So let's look at this email. As you can see, there's there's a lot more information here. Um, we'll start off with the subject. English 11 to 2, 3 p.m. Great. I actually know which class the student is in and which section. I'm immediately able to figure out a little bit more information about them and what they need. The rest of the subject reads, question about intro of rhetorical analysis proposal. All right, I know the student has a question, so when I see this come up in my inbox, I know it's something I need to read quickly so I can respond to them. They've also told me what the question is about, a specific assignment that we've been working on, the rhetorical analysis proposal. Once I've opened the email, I look at the body. They have a greeting. I don't feel like I'm just some nameless service that they are um, asking a question to or trying to get help from. Um, they have a body of an email that actually gives me some information about what they need. They give me specifics. They're telling me a specific portion of the assignment they're having trouble with, the introduction, and they'd like my feedback on it. All right, it's clear. I know what they want. I know how to respond. I know how to help them. They've said thank you. Two words. They go a long way, trust me. And they have a conclusion. Best, regards, sincerely. Um, all of those are good ways to end an email. And they have this thing here. Now, what this is, is it's a signature block. And usually in a workplace or a professional environment, a signature block contains information about who you are, your job title, the company you work for, your contact information. Um, this may not seem like it's important as a student, um, but it really is. And it's a good practice to actually start using a signature block. You can put your full name, your major, your department, the university that you're attending. Now, this may not matter so much if you're emailing inside the university, but if you're, for example, asking about a job or an internship and you're emailing somebody outside the information, outside the university, it does um, contain some good information for them. So just to sum up, um, there's a lot more detail that can go into writing a good email, but these are just some quick tips, some easy things to remember. Use a descriptive subject line. It's what grabs your reader's attention and actually gets them to open the email. Use a greeting. Don't just jump into your email. Say hello, say hi, dear. Something to let them know that you're not just jumping to the middle of conversation with them. Use a direct and concise body. Get to the point. Be clear. Make sure you're not vague. Um, 
remember, especially if you're writing professors, they're dealing with hundreds of students. Make sure they know exactly which class you're in, which assignment you're talking about. Include a closing. Best regards. Sincerely. Best. Um, something to end the email other than just asking your question and being done with it. Include a signature block. It lets people know who you are, your major, um, your department. It's a good practice for when you move into a professional environment. And finally, check for grammar and spelling errors. Use complete sentences. Don't use text to speak. Um, write out the word you. Don't abbreviate unnecessarily. It just, it really does add a sense of authority and ethos if you're able to communicate clearly to your professors.